Hey everyone, welcome to Cyber Platter. This is our new segment where we will discuss common interview questions for cybersecurity professionals. This is of course to improve our knowledge base as well. If you have any questions, queries, please leave a comment or hit us up on our Discord channel. The link to our Discord channel is in the description. If you are prepping for an interview and you want us to take your mock interview, you can leave a comment or you can let us know in the Discord channel and we can help you out with that too, okay? So the question for today is why is phishing so effective today? You know, even after so many security tools in place, we have layered security that is in place and still there's so many people getting phished so very frequently and there's a, a lot of security awareness training that is in place too. Why? Why is phishing so effective? So we will discuss about this question today. So the first thing that we will talk about is the technical uh, gaps. Uh, in that is that there is a delay in the IOCs to get updated in our security tools. How do you think our security tools get the data about the IOCs? For an email address or send us IP address or email domain to be considered malicious or suspicious, it should have been reported by somebody. So if that somebody has reported it, that means that that particular email address or domain or send us IP address, it's already used for some fraudulent activity and it's not that everybody reports an IP address and it will get tagged as malicious in our security tools. The security tool vendors take their time to review the um, report right and add it to their IOC list. So there is always the, always this delay in updating the IOCs. Uh, you can call it a lag. Yeah. The next thing that we can think of is we secure our company mailbox very well. Like, you know, we get those little banners uh, saying in our company mailboxes saying that the email uh, is from an external sender, be cautious, or our quarantine policies for the emails is way stricter. And there are so many anti-malware, anti-spam policies that are provided by the email vendors. Everything is applied and it is very strict. But but then we also most of the times allow the users to access their personal mailbox from any browser like you know web mail right like their personal gmail yahoo mailboxes so what happens the urls or attachments that would have been tagged as malicious in the company mailbox or even blocked uh, would not be blocked in this case because maybe you know Personal mailboxes don't have such uh, strict policies applied to them. So in this case, he will be able to download that attachment or go to that malicious links. It's always the case. It's uh, maybe let me not say always, but most of the times it is the case that company mailboxes generally have stricter security policies than the unmanaged or unmonitored personal mailboxes. Also nowadays, right, uh, bring your own devices is a trend that is going on. It becomes very hard for the security team to manage personal devices. It might not, it, like many of the companies might not even have any BYOD policy that is their security policy. It might not have the same security policies like the company owned devices. And also you can access at least emails on your personal devices, right? Even if it is not like company managed bring your own device, it's just your personal personal device, companies allow you to access a company mailbox from your personal devices. Suppose say there is a suspicious URL, this might have been blocked by the company antivirus solution or endpoint detection and response tool that is the EDR. But now you are accessing this on your personal device and not all the security updates are up to date on your personal devices, right? This most of us experience. Uh, so now the user would not have been able to access this URL or download this attachment on the company device, but can easily do that on his personal device. So there is access.
and also nowadays right the access to the data is so easy like for example social media like you know linkedin for example you can find out the first name and the last name uh, of an employee and usually the email address in any company is almost in the format of uh, first name and then uh, dot last name at your company name dot com so for me, the address, if I'm working for like Amazon or Microsoft, would be like navya.lakshmana at microsoft.com. It's so easy to get this. And uh, not only this, you can get C-level names. Like for example, in Wikipedia, it tells you who the company's uh, CEO is or CFO. This helps the attackers to easily pretend like your CEO and send an email saying, you know, uh, please go to this link to update your details or some thing on the similar ground uh, you know it's also very easy to find out what is the role of a user from linkedin or wiki uh, it is it's very easy to get to know what exactly they are doing suppose say they get the information of some employee go to the linkedin search for what their professional role is you get to know they're from human resource department same then the hacker can pretend to be someone who is interested in a position that is open at your company and send an email with a malicious attachment calling it their resume you you see how easy that can be right to get all the information okay now let's talk about how phishing and human behavior is you know linked together right um, the attackers mostly try to create a sense of urgency uh, like say your credit card is expiring soon it is it is like our tendency to react to such messages it is basic human nature also attackers can use fear as a weapon like if you don't update this form by tomorrow your salary uh, will be delayed or you know the details are not updated this is the sense of fear as well as urgency by saying that you know by tomorrow you have to do this and the attackers are not like okay we don't have to hurt anybody's emotions so we'll be nice to them in the emails and not you know scare them off no they won't be like that they can pretend to be one of your colleagues and be like okay i have met with an accident i need some money can you please send it to me this is very urgent this is like you know human instinct to help others so they are taking advantage of it the next one is greed this is also a very common phishing technique that we see like you know there is a coupon amazon coupon for 50 dollars click this link to get free deals and also to this they add urgency by saying this offer is valid only for the next three hours or four hours or a day or something like that so you know it's great i want to click on that link and get the free coupon it's useful but i don't know there is a phishing link behind it the next one is creating chaos or confusion and even anger sometimes so what if you get an email with a receipt that looks like uh, it's come from amazon or best buy or any other online retailer saying that you have uh, ordered something or you know you're getting a delivery soon so for something that you have never ordered and the immediate reaction is that maybe there has been a mistake or your account was hacked so it's very easy to click on that link in the email to correct the details or tell the retailer that you never ordered it or somebody has hacked your system. This is like, you know, creating confusion and chaos and it's sometimes anger as well. Like, why would somebody do this? Let me go ahead and correct it. And you react very fast in such cases. And also, even after so much of security awareness, the users don't realize the impact of a fish until unless it happens to them. Isn't that a very common human nature? And people want to do their jobs. And in many jobs, there is a need to click on links, open attachments, provide their passwords. And the phishing email might seem like one of those very genuine emails to them. And do you know that it, all it takes is that one person to click that link or download an email or send a conf, send confidential data? And you know, it's always 
uh, that one person that it requires to click the link or download a malicious email or provide confidential data to the attackers. An attacker might have spent, sent a, a phishing email to say about everybody in the organization, but all it takes is that one person to click on the link. So now let's talk about how the attacks uh, have become so sophisticated nowadays, right? Uh, the phishing techniques, attacks, everything, even the malware uh, sophistication is high now. The attackers don't have to send uh, any URL or attachment in an email to fish an employee. Most of the security tools, they flag an email as suspicious uh, if they have any, you know, uh, malicious content in them or even remotely suspicious. What if an attacker is pretending to be somebody from the sales department of your vendor company and then be like, we supplied you so and so material and, you know, can you please pay up and, send, and then just send a normal invoice to you? There is no malicious content in this for the security tools to flag it, right? Until unless, you know, like uh, send us IP address is already tagged tagged as malicious or the email address is already tagged as malicious. But these attacks are so sophisticated that a new domain is created. They use it for a month or two and then discard it. So there is actually no time for the security tools to flag them as malicious, right? So we can say that there is no malicious content in the email and also the IOCs have uh, not been tagged. Uh, so, you know, it's very easy to uh, bypass the security tools. So now let's talk about uh, the traditional security uh, training, uh, awareness, security awareness trainings that uh, that goes on. Uh, so in the traditional security training, all we always mention that, you know, if an email address is from external domain, please be cautious. Or if you don't know that person, please be cautious. Don't click on the URLs or download the attachment. But nowadays the attackers are spoofing the domains, right? There is, it, it doesn't look like it is from an external domain anymore. It's, it, it's getting spoofed. There's email address spoof. There's email ad, uh, domain spoof. So that happens. And not just the domains. They also spoof how your company website looks. Or, you know, nowadays it is very common to have a Microsoft login page in the companies. We see a lot of phishing where they use a fake Microsoft page, which looks exactly like the actual Microsoft page. Other than that, it might not have uh, Microsoft. It might have like a different spelling little bit, a different domain, say like micro SAFT, right? So this is very like a sophisticated kind of method. It's very sneaky. Uh, then there is also impersonation this is also a very common technique that we see even though the email address is of the attacker's email domain the display name of that may be uh, say suppose your ceo or cfo or from your hr department sales department right so what happens in our mailboxes mostly uh, is that until unless you open the email uh, email itself, the email address is not visible. It just gives you the display name. So it's very confusing sometimes. And also it is, you know, basic human instinct to do what an authoritative figure like your boss or supervisor tells them to do. So it's it's like, you know, you just click on it and give the update. Yeah. And even with the download of the malicious content, right? Suppose say there was an attachment. The attackers have become very sneaky with the uh, malware. So sometimes it's hard for our security tools like antivirus to even tag it uh, as malicious or even for that matter, say at least suspicious. No, it doesn't happen sometimes. And the next one in, uh, you know, attackers advantage is there are so many phishing kits that are so uh, easily available today and it is very cheap as well. They are very low priced. Anybody can get it. And there is uh, a lot of increase in ransomware as a service, right? You might have heard this. 
uh, this is also very easy to get. There are people who provide this service and these cr cyber criminals are very well funded. They have a lot of money and they're very focused on what they want. They have a lot of patience. They might hit like, say, um, uh, 50,000 users and one person might react to them and give them all the data that they want. So, you know, it's like becoming very sophisticated method to fish the users and it's always that one person who's gonna click on the link download the attachment or give them the confidential data or access to their systems so you can talk about all this for the question why phishing is so effective and if you have any more things to be added here please let us know in the comment section or in our discord. Thank you so much for watching this. I will see you in the next video with another topic. Thank you. Bye-bye.